Welcome back to Misunderstood. This is Rachel Yucatel, your host. Thank you so much for listening to part one. If you haven't listened to part one, please do so because this is part two of my amazing interview with dog rescue extraordinaire Lee Asher of the Asher House. He can be found at the Asher House on Instagram. You have to go check it out. He has over a million followers there. And now for part two. You were talking about clean, the cleanup. How does it smell in your house over there? Man, really good. I have these, I, I, the, I have uh, a lot of help in that department. I have three people that are cleaning the house uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, I'm really big on things being neat and organized. Like I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I don't like, I don't like any spots on the floor spots. People are always asking me how my house is so clean in my videos. Like I like everything done. Like it has to look good. You know, like I, I invest a lot of money on keeping my life organized and my house clean. You know, I have two, two people from, you know, I, I have 28 employees, 30 now, actually. We have 30 employees and two of them, all they do all day is clean outside. Like literally from, from the morning to the afternoon, they're cleaning up dog poop and spraying and this. And it's, it's one thing that I make sure, like, if I'm going to do this, I'm not going to do it where people think because we have a lot of dogs equals a lot of dog shit like i want us to be pristine you know the dogs get they all the dogs get groomed every month some of them get groomed every weeks like i'm really big into keeping their nails trimmed their ears clean the fur you know brushing like we i run a really tight ship when it comes to that Mm -hmm. you were talking a little bit i think every rescue should yeah it's definitely important sorry no Uh, go no no um you were talking a little bit ago about how you think it's really important to balance your life and what you're doing and how you need to maybe focus on you a little bit more. Um, You bring us along on your journey of all these dogs and their story or animals and their stories, but we rarely hear about you unless people are really listening to what you're talking about. Because normally when you're talking about the dog and their story, you can, as the viewer, can really get a lot of insight into you and your head because you really talk more about, you know, a metaphor kind of, at least that's what I've picked up on. And I love that. You're absolutely right. But do you ever get lonely doing this? I really don't. Oh. I, I really don't. You know, lucky enough, I, I grew up alone. You know, I, I even lived alone. My parents moved out when I was 15. So I, I didn't have the childhood where if something was wrong, I go to mom or dad, you know, I went to me and, you know, I went to the beach and I remember looking at the ocean, Uh, you know, Spanish river, not too far from you, Spanish river beach. So I would go to Spanish river beach. I would a couple of miles and I would run there. And now it's my safe place as well. You know, it's, it's not a good thing. I'm really working on not, not, uh, not isolating myself. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's just my go-to. I, I like to be alone um, or, or with the dogs. And I, I, I know what sounds weird. I don't know what that feeling feels like, loneliness. Mm. Like, my parents feel it a lot. I have a lot of friends who confide in me. A lot of people, you know, really, it's really open up to me. And being lonely is like a big thing. I don't feel it. I've never felt it. Well, that's probably because you're surrounded by so much love and you're so busy giving your exactly exactly it's like you know the dogs are uh the the dogs really take up so much of my time that to me when someone wants to have lunch with me it's it's more of a task sure you know yeah it takes you out of what you love to be doing where you obviously feel your most fulfillment um, yeah, you're the, but to, to, to one of the, one of the cleaning ladies who like, she's, I'm very close with all my employees and one of the cleaning ladies, like she loves work. Like people really do. I'm not just saying it, you know, people fucking love working here. Like yeah. it's a beautiful environment, like a lot of love. The dogs are friendly, you know, it's so one of the cleaning ladies, she also follows me. So she gets really excited to come to work so she could be in the environment. And yesterday she's like, she said, you're always alone. Like you're always, you're always alone. And I said to her, I'm never alone. (laughs) Yeah. So true though. Um, Your animals have such great names. Um, Tell people like some of your favorite names and how you come up with names for these dogs. Uh, Unfortunately, I can't take all of the credit. You know, Uh, I have people like to give me their opinions when it comes to names. 
Um, but a lot of times what people don't realize is I take the name that they already have mm -hmm. and I just play off of that name so that they can still be somewhat familiar to the syllables in it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I had a dog named Sarge that I named Roger, right? Because I felt like it was somewhat, maybe that's not the best example, but Sarge or Raj, like it's in the short and, you know, but I would say the best name is probably, I never had a favorite until recently. And I, I rescued this dog and I, that has, I forgot, sir, I forgot the, so bad at names, but she has her frontal lobe is messed up. Mm -hmm. and um she's very wobbly and she could you know she tries to keep up with the pack and one of my favorite movies growing up was matilda yeah and i named her matilda after after that character because she was so different but so special right and i would say that's my favorite one i love that story of matilda i watched it recently on your instagram um, so i knew you were talking about her because you show the viewer and people that are listening should really go on the asher house um, at the Asher house on Instagram and, and yeah. looked at the story of Matilda in, you know, as one of many, but this story was so inspiring because you yeah. really talk about, you know, you show the rescue, you show taking her out of the cage or whatever you show her, bringing her and introducing her to the pack. You show, she has such a hard time walking. And then you show that transformation of how she looks so happy and so good. Yeah. Yeah. And you get teary eyed, which made me, you know, totally start oh. sobbing because you were like, listen, if you've ever felt misunderstood or like no one loves you and everyone's going to give up on you this is just a pure example of someone who thrives with love and everyone just needs to be loved or stop and think i thought that was such a great message i mean it almost brings me to tears talking about it because it's so universal and and makes so much sense i mean people are so harsh to not realize that you're walking down the street and people are going through so much even though they look like they're not and especially with now the social media we have where it's all smoke and mirrors and people can look their best and seem their best in photos inside they're the ones that put their heads on the pillow and are sometimes going through so much and i i think just that story in particular and i'm sure you have a million more but was just a huge eye opener of like people need to realize that love can change someone's life and just not giving up on someone who's frustrating you or isn't the same that was the other message you were like if you're not the same embrace that because it's so beautiful as opposed to feeling different and that's I, it's I, so I, complicated to to accept right like it's so complicated to accept but it's just there's no way around it like your differences are what make you beautiful like the things that you want to change about yourself, the things that, you know, maybe you you got bullied about or someone broke up with you over your uniqueness, you know, it's what makes you so beautiful. I was talking to a friend of mine, this girl, and she's like, I really need a friend to talk to. I, I said, you know, okay, which I really don't, I got to be honest, I, I don't like being that person. I'm, I'm busy enough, but I, this was a very good friend of mine. And I said, okay, yeah, what well, you know, let's talk tonight. And she said, I think my boyfriend is going to break up with me. And I said, what's up? You know, and she said, like, he gets so embarrassed by me. I said, how so? And she said, well, like an example, we were walking in an sh outdoor shopping mall yesterday. And this girl had these two puppies. And I was like playing with them and they were jumping on me. And I, I was on the floor. And he was so embarrassed that I was on the floor. And I said, break up with this guy immediately. Immediately. I said, I think that that's the best thing about you. That's the best thing about you. You know, it's like if I said, don't, wouldn't you rather have, instead of changing that about yourself, wouldn't you rather have a boyfriend who would be on the floor with you? Yeah. Right. And she was like, I never, she never looked at it that way. Right. Instead of thinking of what she could add to her life, she was thinking about how to change her life for this guy. Mm -hmm. And she did. She broke up with him. And it's like, you know, we should never change ourselves based off what other people think. You know, it's, it's what makes you different. You know, that's, that's what's so hard is because there would be way more successful people, not just financially, definitely financially, but also, you know, as far as finding your purpose and all these things, if we didn't let the world or people shape you, mm -hmm. if you accepted that you were different, 
loved that you were different, embraced that you were different, and then acted on your differences. That's your ticket to success. And again, I don't mean that financially. I mean success in every way. Love, relationship, you, you name it, you know. Um, you do such a good job of um, showing these stories in your content and um, these heartwarming star stories. And most people are sharing in tears of joy with you as they watch these stories happen. But there are times when um, obviously the the animal is at the end of their life or sick and does need to be put to sleep. And we go on that journey with you as well. And we're sharing in those tears with you as you have to say goodbye to animals. What's that like for you having to do that? so often which part dealing with it or sharing it or both um well first of all the dealing with it i mean the sharing with it i'm assuming it helps you get through it so you're not doing it by yourself almost but i i i and we can talk about that but um what's that like to have to care for these animals and then put them to sleep i mean i know watching pom-poms let's say um, yeah, be yeah. put to sleep and every time they leave you it must be so difficult you know now I know this sounds really weird, so let me know if I explain this the right way, please. Now, I'm so grateful that they're able to leave with me. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to have this, like, I, I used to, I used to be by the animal crying, you know, saying I'm sorry, and I'm I used to tell the animal what I wish I could have done differently. I'd tell, tell the animal, I wish I had more time and I would cry. And I regret every time I did that because the animal just felt this pain from me. Yeah. I wish I did, I wish I did what I do now where I tell the animal everything I love about her and I tell, tell him how amazing, just how amazing of a dog they are to me and how grateful. I mean, I, I, I kiss them with, with a smile because I know, you know, I know that like they will feel this positive. This is a, a good feeling. It will be a beautiful passage. And by doing this, it, it's much more peaceful for me. You know, once the animal is gone, I am bawling and crying. But during our last few moments together, it is nothing but joy. And it's a celebration of life. It's a celebration of the life that this animal gave to me mm -hmm. and the celebration of life that this animal has given to everyone, including the pack. And it should, it's, I know it's hard, but for anyone listening, when you say goodbye to your loved ones, do it with a beautiful sense of passion and love and not sadness yeah. or regret. Make sure to only grieve once they're gone. Don't grieve for a second that they're here. And when you do grieve while they're here, don't let them see it. Yeah. Because they don't know, they don't know what you're doing. They just said that this doesn't feel good. I sometimes reflect back on the times where I was so emotional you know, saying goodbye. And I, boy, oh boy, do I regret those moments so much in my life. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't know any better, but I, it's, it's really hard for me, but you know, at this stage with how many animals we rescue, I do realize like, look, you know, you have 50 dogs, dogs are going to die. Yeah. You know, dogs are going to get sick. Dogs are going to get hurt. Accidents are going to happen. You have 50 dogs and you just have to, you just have to accept that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, de de death is as equal of a, a, an importance to life as life itself, you know, so. That's right. And I think for yeah. a lot of people yeah. listening who've either gone through losing a pet or are dealing with making that decision on when to put a pet to sleep, know that, I mean, losing a pet is like worse than having a broken leg. I mean, it is so painful. And I've lost uh, a few pets in my life and it just, I couldn't get out of bed sometimes for a week because it yeah. devastated me so much. Um, and it's also hard, you know, sometimes you lose a pet early on in their life and that's really hard because you feel like they haven't, you know, had this big life. And then 
you also lo can lose a pet after having it for 20 years and that's just as devastating because you've spent all this time with this one animal that's been in your life and if i can just indulge you for one second a, a, one story of my animal Please. i um when i was about 26 i um I was uh, dating a man and uh, his name was Andy and he forbid, we lived together and he forbid me to get a dog. So of course, on my way home every day, I would pass this dog store and this was in Manhattan. And um, I would, you know, look at the dogs in the window. And um, finally, one day I came home with a dog and Andy was like, what, are you crazy? I forbid you to get a dog. What are you doing? And I said, let's uh -huh. just try this for a week and see how it goes. And if you hate it, I'll bring it back. Um, so, you know, I have all these pictures of Andy, you know, hugging the dog was a tiny little, uh, Jack Russell Terrier. We named it Mickey for Mickey blue. Eyes. Oh, that's a great name. Blue eyes. And so I have all these pictures of Andy hugging the dog when he thought I wasn't looking like he would sleep and the dog would be, you know, next to him or whatever and yeah. running around with the dog and whatever. So fast forward about three weeks later, we were getting ready to go to Greece and, um, Andy proposed to me and I felt like this was this great family that we were going to have now this dog and he loved the dog and let me keep the dog. And out of nowhere, um, the dog developed seizures one day and it ended up, we found out it had distemper. It came from a dog store here in Manhattan. No, yeah, which is, a, which is a horrible thing. You know, people really oh, should be it, getting it, animals it, from, from pet stores. It, it, it will kill your dog. Oh yeah. my, how, and how long so have you had the dog? I had the dog for a month. And um, oh, so God. we had to go and put the dog to sleep and I was sobbing and mm -hmm. Andy came, you know, and met me from work. He worked on Wall Street and came and met me. Uh, he left his job early and I was just sobbing. And he's like, Rachel, you have to realize that everything happens for a reason. And I said, what, how could you give me that metaphor now? Nothing happens for a reason. We've had this dog for a month. It didn't get to have a life. And he sat me down and he said, Rachel, you have to understand you loved that dog more than anyone in the world could have. And it thought right. that it was for its mom and we loved right. the dog so much. It didn't know that it maybe was supposed to live till it was 15. It lived right. life. And you should really embrace the fact that it was loved so much while you had it. And you were there for the minute that it, you, you know, it died. So I thought, okay, well, whatever, I'll figure out at one point what, how this is going to, you know, come to pass that I feel like it was meant to be. So anyways, um, about a week later, so Andy and I went to Greece, we were leaving three days later, we went to Greece, we came back. And a day after Andy and I got back from Greece, uh, Andy was killed in the World Trade Center. Oh, my God. Yeah. And um, sorry. And so I, I went back and I got um, I didn't know what to do. And oh my God. so I went back to that pet store um, that happened on a Tuesday on Thursday, I went to the pet store and I said, my dog died, my fiance was killed by terrorists, I need a dog. So they get, let me pick out any dog I wanted. And there was a, a, um, a Brussels Griffin sitting in a cage, yeah. his eyes okay. were like looking in different directions. And he was all furry and weird looking. But he just when I walked back and forth, he stared at me every time I walked back and I said, that's my dog. I want that dog. And I named that dog Rudy Giuliani. And um, because Rudy was such a hero then, and I had the dog for 20 years. And through the 20 years that I had that dog, he was the constant man in my life, so to speak. He got me through everything. And I love that dog. But to spool back for one second, a year later, you know, it was kind of easy to go through that trauma, not easy, but easier to go through that trauma because I went through it so publicly. And my picture was on a cover of every newspaper um, in the world because I have a famous photo of me looking for Andy kind of in the at, in the rubble or whatever. And um, people would check in with me and I had people at my home for weeks and, you know, but eventually that goes away. People's, people go back to their lives and I was alone with my thoughts and, and alone for the first time. So a year after September 11th happened, I had to take a leave of absence. I had a really hard time dealing with it. Um, and I went away to kind of a sanctuary in um, Brazil to do like a hiking trip for two weeks by myself with this group. And in the middle of the night, I woke up and I had this dream and I sat up and I said to my roommate, oh my God, I know why Mickey died. And she's like, who the hell's Mickey? What are we talking about? And I said, Mickey died so Andy could be the one to teach me the lesson that he wasn't supposed to live till he was maybe 80 or 90, that he lived the life he was supposed to live. And I shouldn't grieve and be so upset and not be able to get through life thinking like every time I'm in a cab, oh, Andy should have been sitting here. We were supposed to get married on this date or I'm supposed to have him as my husband and I lost out. 
Mickey died so Andy could teach me the lesson that when someone dies, that's their time. And that as long as you loved them and felt loved by them, that, you know, that was their life. And so at that moment, I was like, I know my purpose of why Mickey died so Andy could teach me that story so that I could get over Andy easier. Anyway, so the point is, is that dogs share such a big story and their death can actually mean something if you look for the meaning. And it might take you a long time and it hurts so bad when they go, but it's, you know, there is a meaning behind each thing. I truly. You're so, you're so, so beautiful. Oh my God. Thanks. Um, well, that, that is, I mean, th- <laughs> thank you so much for sharing that with me. I, yeah. I, I, I and, talk, talk, and Rudy, uh, Rudy lived for 20 years and he was just the best. And, Putting him to yeah. sleep was also very hard, but I knew, you know, at that moment that it was right. And I did, I'm glad you're telling me what the best way to do it is because I sat there and I was brave and I kind of, you know, held on to him until the end. And then when he was put to sleep, then I lost it. But I, you know, I'm glad I had that, that lifetime with him, you know, and yeah. I, I've, it, it's been hard for me not to have a dog in my life. You know, I said, I would never yeah. get one again, but I had to go get another and another, you know, so I think, yeah, that, trust me, I, talk, I get that. yeah, so talk about the difference really quickly, um, about why people should adopt from a shelter. Um, because I think so many people make the mistake of thinking they have to get a dog, a purebred from a breeder or from a pet store. Cause they're so beautiful in the window. Yeah. First of all, I mean, it's hard for me to just give over. I, I just want to say like, not, you know, I think the point you, you have proven the point of why people go through hard times. You have proven why people have. And many people use their experiences for reasons of being um, maybe not the best of, of people, right? Either being very negative or, or cruel or things like that. So for you to use your experience in such a beautiful way and have such a, a meaningful and life-changing message to even myself, I mean, I, I am now going to you know, adopt that belief as well, which I appreciate. And uh, boy, th- th- thank you so much for sharing that with me. Seriously, that, that, that is incredible. I, I did not see that story going that way. I was, I mean, I can't believe what I just heard. So thank you so much for, for being vulnerable with me. I really appreciate it. Of course, thank you. Um, now, th- when I started the Asher House, it was my following that inspired the Asher House, not so much me, that inspired the mission, I should say. I, so many people were asking me about my dogs, uh, Lily, uh, St. Bernard, um, Stella, who passed away, who was this beautiful pit bull. She she looked like she was $500,000, you know? And Lily had been at the shelter for a month. Uh, Stella had been at the shelter for nearly four months. all of my different dogs with these different stories, people are trying to buy them from me on social media thinking, so I, it hit me that people have, don't go to animal shelters. People are too afraid to go to animal shelters. And I would have these conversations on my lives and they basically, because of all the commercials you see on TV, you know, where it's just really sick dog, really scared dog, a dog with one eye, you know, begging for a, a donation. The, the shelters don't show that you know, the shelters aren't showing 99% of the, the dogs. They're only showing that one, that one section of the shelter that you're, that you're not even allowed to go into, mm-hmm. you know? So I was like, you guys are afraid to go in shelter. What do you think is in shelters? And they said either really sick dog or really mean pit bulls. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no way, dude. So I, I made it my mission to show people the dogs that are inside shelters. And still today, on purpose, I like I just rescued this. I mean, in my opinion, uh, the Akita to me, as far as looks go, the Akita is the most beautiful dog in the world. Like it is just uh, an exquisite animal, and I've never, never had one because I, you know, I wanted to rescue one. And just at, at the shelter that I go to all the time, they had this. Um, you know, she had a she had a broken hip. She was hit by a car, but there now she's fine in this beautiful Akita. And I can tell you, you know, A, if you want a purebred, I just want you to know something. The, that dog most likely, doesn't matter where you go, most likely that dog, and I'm sorry to say this, I'm just going to be really blunt here, okay, yeah. is going to not have a long life. It's most likely going to have a shorter lifespan than a mixed breed. Why is that? Because... 
pure, most purebred dogs are inbreded. There's very, there are no, no matter what laws you hear of, the, the animal like laws, welfare, you know, it's not very strict. That's why we're always getting these neglected animals that animal care won't do anything about because they can't do anything about it. Dogs are just property, mm. unfortunately. It's just property. So when people don't care about their property, they don't care what happens to the property as long as it's making them money. Mm -hmm. And you should net it's 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 like it's terrible because they're forcing their dogs to basically have sex and get get pregnant as many times as they can mm -hmm. until they're done with that dog. You shouldn't be supporting that in the first place. But if that doesn't bother you, if that's not a reason, then for your own financial purposes of spending that kind of money on a dog, the health risks that are gonna come with that are extreme. There's just a long list of things. And it's, it's as far as the smart thing to do, it's not even about just the, the conscious, good compassion act of rescuing. It's literally the smart thing to do. Like it's better for the dog, but it's also better for you. It's gonna, it's gonna save you time in the vet's office and many other things. And I just encourage people, you know, if you can't decide whether or not you should adopt or go to a breeder, I ask you to just for a month, it doesn't have to be just once, for a month, every week, you know, go to two different shelters. Go to two shelters a week for a month. And if there's only three of them in your area, go to the same ones for that month. And if you don't fall in love with the dog in the next month, and if, and if you're not in a rush, please extend it to two months. Mm. And if you're not in a rush, extend it to three. But if you're like, I want a dog in the next three weeks, or I want a dog in the next six months, then I want you to just continue visiting your shelter. And I can guarantee you, you're going to find a dog to rescue. You're going to fall in love. You're going to have that. You're going to, you're just going to know, and you're going to find your soulmate. You're going to find your dog, but you have to try, you know, it's very easy to go to a breeder's website, see all the cute puppies, pick one, and then, you know, you're set. I always encourage people, get the dog that you want. Don't let the rescue world bully you into any sort of breed, into any sort of dog. No one's trying to bully you here. I just ask you, not tell, I ask you to please visit a shelter a few times a month or a few times a week, whatever you have time. And I think that you'll find your dog there. That's such great advice. And also people have to realize that you know, it's a lifelong commitment. So it, you should take some time to really um, do Thank the you for research that. Yes. and get involved because so many people are just, you know, their kid says, oh, I want a puppy and they see a cute puppy and they want it. And then, you know, it, it becomes something that's like a doll to them and they put yeah. it to the wayside when they find a better toy, you know? And, and one thing, if I can please add, you know, if you are breed specific, which means if let's say you're set on having a golden retriever or you're set on having an Akita or whatever type of dog, there isn't a breed out there that doesn't have a specific rescue group. Mm. Every breed has a rescue group. So if you're not in a rush, which you just mentioned, you shouldn't be when you're getting an animal, get in touch with a rescue. There's a, a variety of them. You can have three rescues that you build a relationship with and, and, and have them, it's their job, have them help you find this dog that you're looking for. Mm. You know, but be willing to get a dog. Let's say you want an eight-week-old puppy. It's not going to happen, you know, but you don't really want an eight-week-old puppy. I mean, there's nothing harder to take care of than a puppy. So if you want a puppy, be willing to get a five-month-old or a six-month-old dog, which is a great age for you. That way you can really already see the behavior, you know, of the dog. And, and take your time and go to a rescue and have them help you get the dog that you want. Right, right. Um, a lot of these dogs have inspired creations for you. I think it was Lily, I'm not sure if I'm right, has helped you create your CBD line. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Uh, just tell you, us you about mentioned, that. Well, you, like you mentioned, which I'm sorry to bring up, but you mentioned distemper. Luckily, it wasn't distemper, but Lily, you know, the fourth day after adopting Lily, we, I realized that she had these awful seizures and they were just getting worse. At the time, I, I was very new to actually rescuing animals, you know, so I, I was pretty nervous. Um, it really freaked me out. Witnessing a seizure is like a scary thing. Now I've witnessed many, but I was trying all these different things. She, like, I, I was spending a lot of money that I really couldn't afford. It, it was for the first time where I 
didn't know what to do where, you know, the doctors had recommend putting her down. Um, and somebody recommended CBD to me. And, you know, CBD sometimes can take a week or two to work. But with Lily, it worked right away. And CBD was something that I was taking for my back pain. I didn't know we could give it to the dogs. This is six, six, seven years ago. So it wasn't as popular. And she hasn't had a seizure since. So it was something that I became very passionate about. I believed in it because it worked for my own dog. You know, we talked about earlier about um, don't, don't talk about experiences unless you experience them, right? So this was for me, an experience for me that changed my dog's life. And I, I just wanted to share it with the world. So I, I bought that same CBD line and created it and started my own. That's amazing. All right, last couple questions here. Um, the Asher House kind of started as a short-term dream, maybe going on a, a drive for three months or whatever, but now it's turned into your career. How do you fund all of this and how can people help get involved and donate? Or So 100% um, the only way, because there's a lot of scammers out there, so thank you for asking, is the only way to donate to the Asher House is on our website. There is no other place to donate. And everything on the asherhouse.com is 100% nonprofit, all of it. It's 100% nonprofit. So if you go to theasherhouse.com, all of the merchandise is nonprofit. And of course, if you click donate, there is a monthly option as well. And that's all nonprofit too. And is there a goal that you have every year? Like how much does it cost you a year to keep this up and running for a month? Um, for the for animal sanctuary alone and the dogs, it's about, I would say, around seven to eight hundred thousand dollars a year. Our bills are. Wow. So it's it's not cheap, but you know, it's not just dogs. That let's not forget, it's it's, it's that much because we have horses, right. Donkeys, goats, alpacas, llamas, birds. We like we see your babies. parrot behind you. We have, we, have, we have parrots. We have a lot of different dogs, uh, a lot of different animals, and we have six, seven cats now. We're about to be nine cats. So, you know, you think about how much the average dog costs a month, you multiply that by 50 as well with the space and it, it, it's, it's literally a fortune. <laughs> right. Yeah, literally. So, and I'm sure any donation helps, like, you know, people should go on the website. It's the asherhouse.com. Yeah, the asherhouse.com. Even, you know, guys, like when, it, when it's that many people, what people don't realize, even in a dollar, you know, yeah. it's like you do what you can and. And what I will say, if it's not to our shelter, uh, to, excuse me, to our sanctuary, uh, please donate to your local shelter. Please donate to your local rescue. If if you are passionate about an animal shelter, although I really appreciate, Rachel, you talking about my foundation and my organization, um, giving is a habit. So if this is not a habit for you and you're about to give one time and your only time, then I'd rather you give it to your local shelter. But if you are looking into making giving a habit, whether it be a dollar a month or five dollars a month, then my organization would be very grateful to be a part of that giving. Um, just out of curiosity, because you talked about your former boss, I think you said his name was Al, um, who was disappointed in you. Do you still talk to him now? What does he think of you? Oh, my God. What of you? <laughs> You're so funny. Uh, I love him so much. He loves me so much. He is. He is a better mentor to me now than than before you know we have a different sort of relationship now where it's not just me asking for advice it's now a friendship mm -hmm. and um i have to tell you i don't have many people in my life but i have him in my life and he has me and i love that guy you know i love him so much like i really i love him you know and i have to tell you something he never does anything without reason. Mm -hmm. Like he does everything for a reason. And I never asked him this because I don't want to bring it up, but I wouldn't be surprised if he did it on purpose mm -hmm. to, to, you know, I think he may have told me that to really light the fire under my ass because I really needed it at the time. And I think that he taught me, no one needs to believe in you if you believe in yourself. Yeah.
Yeah. Well, I'm sure he does not think you're stupid anymore and thinks your decision no. was the best one for you and for so many other people and animals. Um, Most definitely. The last question I have for you is what is left on your bucket list that still needs to be done? I know you said your vision board was accomplished, but is there something you're looking forward to and hope to achieve? Yeah, I, I haven't announced it. So this is my first time announcing it. So you're the first to hear it. Um, we're opening up an animal shelter. Wow. And we're going to have, we're, you know, it's going to be very similar to the layout. We'll be able to go there and volunteer and adopt a dog and adopt a cat. And um, it's going to be really something special. So that, that's the next step is opening up this animal shelter. And when is that going to happen? Um, if I had to guess, I think it'll be open and running this time next year. That's, that's would be my estimate. Okay. Amazing. So I'm sure we will all look out for that information. Um, so people can get involved. Um, all right. So tell people where they can find you, where they can again, donate and how people can find you on Instagram and on YouTube. Yeah. You do a lot of yeah, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, it's, a, uh, the Asher house and there's no other, uh, way to get a hold there's a lot of fake Asher House accounts I, I hate to say it but um there's a lot of you know fake accounts that ask people for money I don't answer direct messages I don't speak to pretty much anyone I, I don't have the time um so you know if you're ever speaking to me it's uh, it's it's most it's not it's not accurate so please be careful that's the first thing I want to say but um all the ways to contact us to contact our organization um or anything like that to donate. It, ever, all the information is on theasherhouse.com. And I think you also have nine puppies, I think you said, that are coming in that you're going to need to adopt? Yep, yep. So next Sunday, um, uh, we have six German Shepherd Golden Retrievers coming in, two Akita Husky mixes, and a Doberman. So we'll have to bring them in. They're coming from Texas, which Texas needs a lot of help when it comes to animals. Um, but we'll be rehabilitating them and then they'll be they'll be available for adoption at our partner rescue which is family dogs new life animal shelter okay and do they have an instagram so people can follow that oh absolutely absolutely family dog new life animal shelter as well yeah okay perfect well thank you so much i cannot wait to see where all of this takes you and uh, i can't wait to meet you in person one day and as i said to you before we started i feel, feel like part of my purpose that i found is to tell other people's stories it makes me feel good makes me p feel great getting to meet them and and asking the questions that i want to know and i think other people would want to know too and you literally i feel like is one of the reasons i started this podcast so i can meet you hear your story and make sure that people hear your story because I think it's so inspirational for everybody. I, I got to tell you, I, I, your viewers, I, I'm sure already know it, but I've done a lot of these and you are the fucking best. Like, <laughs> you are so good and so genuine and just pure and beautiful. Uh, it, it, it's not my place to say, since you kind of invited me, if you will, to give my opinion, I not agree with you more. I, I think that that is a beautiful purpose to help people tell their stories. Stories are what inspires people and connects people and makes people feel like they can relate. And I personally have never had someone do it better than you. So I really, really appreciate the opportunity and I look forward to doing it again with you if you'll have me. Thank you. I would love to have you again. And I think for anyone that feels misunderstood, they should definitely hop on to the Asher House um, and really watch what goes on with these animals because you will find some insight into your own life. And I think it's just so, you know, it, it's gotten me through times and I'm sure it'll get other people through times as well. Answer a lot of questions internally for themselves. And, and I just want to remind people, I promise you, I don't even know you, I promise you this, the more misunderstood you feel, the more special you are, but you have to use it for a force for good. Just remember that if, if it's not a force for good, it's not your purpose. You're a force for good, a force for beauty. And um, I, I, I really wish how powerful people knew that you were, you know, like you, you really are here for a reason and you could, there's no time limit. You, you could spend your whole life trying to figure that out. As long as you're doing goodness, just, just keep doing good stuff and it's going to happen. I promise goodness always prevails. Uh, 
someone who's like a mother to me, Rebecca, who you've spoken to, she always says that goodness always prevails. And she's so right. Do the right thing. Do good. Do a good job. Do the best that you can. And it's all going to work out. And when it's not working out, it's, it's for a reason. It's because that's not right for you yet. And just keep going, I promise. Thank you so much. What, ama- what an amazing message. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Bye. I love you.